you. Okay, look, I'll be honest with you. The last couple of weeks, I have not felt like making any content. And so some things have been a little bit bland or rushed or something like that. Um, but this one's going to be <laughs> not so different. It's just a couple of things that I've noticed the past couple of weeks or the past couple of days. And I just wanted to talk about them a little bit because I keep seeing them on my news feeds. So the first thing is obviously the coronation. Now I'm in Australia, so we are a Commonwealth country and we're going our own way. We're doing our own thing. The royal kind of vibe is more or less just a tradition and it's in the background to what we do in regular life. But we are a Commonwealth country, so that means we get the coronation screened on a bunch of different channels. We get a replay and then we get recaps all over the news for the next few days. We then get some mainstream articles on, oh, Harry looked awkward as he walked into the room and Harry looked weird or gave us a strange smile as he stepped into a car leaving only hours after his father was crowned, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, why you should not like him or Megan. By the way, I didn't know it was Megan. I thought it was Megan. I thought that's the only way you say it. But then Americans like Oprah and whatever, you guys all say Megan. So I was like, okay, all right, cool, Megan. Anyway, so I walked into my mum's house. Now, she's from England, so it's kind of, she's grown up with the monarchy and everything, so she's not too fussed about it, but she does like to sort of see what's going on, and she likes all the, not costumes, um, traditional dress and that kind of stuff. She likes the tradition of it and watching it. So she was uh, in front of the TV watching a recap and telling me about it, and I don't doubt that she actually sat there the night before and watched the whole thing. I saw it and... <laughs> Okay, so they're showing people walk in and out and everything, and I'm thinking, climate grifter, dodgy politician from Australia, musician with really terrible morals, oh, alleged pedophile. It was just a room of the most terrible people in the world. It's the kind of thing where if you shut the door and let a match through it in, the rest of us would, you know, would be fine. <laughs> It was just horrible backslappers that are keeping each other's secrets, sitting next to each other, pretending that they are there to do a wholesome activity. And uh, yeah, I didn't like it. The only cool part was when the articles came out from America. Oh my goodness, there's the Grim Reaper. I'm like, bitch, you wish. I wish. That would have been awesome. But let's face it, his prominent and most easy target to take care of did not even make it. He sent his care I mean, <coughs> wife instead, and that's former Vice President Joe Biden, who did not attend. Now, obviously, King Charles is no spring chicken, so he's going to be the shortest reigning monarch in that country, I think, for a very long time in history. And then the crown apparently will go to King William, his son, or Prince William, his son. Okay, and so besides all the rest of the stuff people are thinking, I'm thinking about our money. So right now we have Queen Elizabeth II all over the back of our money and on some of our banknotes and it's going to change to Charles, but then he's gonna probably have the biscuit in like a few years anyway, so then what, it changes to William again? The amount of money wasted, holy shit. Um, but yeah, I'm going off topic. I was gonna say, I don't think Charles passes legislation or anything like that, and he's not gonna really do anything, but I think it's important to remember that when you think, oh, the monarchy doesn't do anything, they're just a figurehead, they're just like famous people, you know, it's just tradition. Mm. Think about the house that you're in right now, whether you rent it, whether you paid for it and you own it. Think about the land that's under you and how much that is worth. And then I want you to pretend that you own New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the UK, any number of little islands that we don't even know about because they're really small in our sphere. And that's how well off this person is. That's how well off the family is. That's how much control they potentially have. So never forget that. When he's out here and he's making these speeches, oh, climate change this, or emissions that, and when he went there on his own jet, when he tells you to not eat meat, when he's trying to push all these ideas, you remember this person is more wealthy than you can even imagine. And then side note, those sitting there going, oh, colonization, and this, that, and whatever, all these protesters I'm seeing in the street corner, and shut up. They ended that. They, for all the good and bad and whatever, you're living the way you do because these people came and did their thing and now we're all together we're all scum mate it's no <laughs> there's no difference these people think we are nothing so just keep that in mind anyway 
Moving on from this coronation stuff. There's been a new bid to get Julian Assange home to Australia. And there's a parliamentary committee that have come together from all walks of the political system. So there's a Green Senator, there's a Labor Senator, a Liberal Senator, an Independent MP. And they've all gotten together and managed to get a petition together that has 26,000 signatures on it in order to present that to someone who cares. So in this case, it was Caroline Kennedy, who is the US ambassador to Australia. And she was nice enough to entertain the thought and kind of agree that maybe something needs to be done. And apparently she held a breakfast, I think it was, or a gathering where all of these people were there and they discussed this issue and this petition was presented. Now, Julian Assange's brother, Gabriel Shipton, said that it was a good sign, quote unquote, that this has been accepted and people are now on board trying to make something happen. And he, I think he was thanking them for making up the petition because Julian Assange has been in the UK, stuck there for four years. So everyone's starting to go, look, I know he's kind of this, uh, this, kind of anti-hero thing and it comes across as he's not even a real person but he is and this is someone's life and they're sitting there just sitting there in another country while nothing happens so this comes at a time when former vice president joe biden is coming to australia for a two-week stint and he's going to meet our sorry our prime minister and they're hoping to get this as a topic to discuss because it's this committee's hope that there will be either charges dropped or that they will stop the pursuit of the WikiLeaks founder. So in this country, we know about Julian Assange, but he seems to have fallen away from topics of conversation, at least to the normies, basically. And this kind of seems a little out of left field all of a sudden, but I'm happy they're doing it because yes, it is about time. And Peter Dutton, which nobody likes Peter Dutton, even he, at the time he was, he's one of these quite authoritarian, um, harsh kind of guys in parliament. And he was critical of the situation when all of this first went down with WikiLeaks and Assange and the footage and all of that stuff. But even he's starting to say, look, this is dragging on. Something does need to be done. I've seen Julian Assange's mum, Christine, come over to my city and speak before some independent films on the subject. I know that his dad was in Perth at a freedom rally making a speech, which is on YouTube, I believe. So I'll try and put a link below. So there are things being done here and there, but for the most part, the mainstream media tends to leave him to the back pages now. And I just find it funny. I find the whole thing really strange because, you know, you take, say, uh, Bilderberg Group. So before everyone knew what the Bilderberg Group was, there was only one man kind of covering that. And uh, that was, you know, Alex Jones. And at the time, the whole premise of it was, the whole thing that was wrong with it was that people were breaking the Logan Act, which was when American senators, American politicians and stuff got in a room with foreign entities and powers and discussed things behind closed doors. And that was breaking the Logan Act. So that was kind of, you know, that was going on. And when I saw this WikiLeaks thing in Assange, it just, it seemed to me that it was um, kind of, one, they had to save face because it made their policies look terrible. And two, I kind of felt like they were shooting the messenger. So he didn't do these kinds of things. He just kind of ran a website that exposed some stuff. But to be clear, to reiterate, to tell you if you've forgotten because it's been so long or you don't know, I believe it was charges against the Espionage Act and there were 17 of them as well as a couple of hacking charges that they're trying to get Julian Assange on. And then that got me thinking recently about the fact that, you know, the Logan Act, that was all, you know, those people are allowed to do that. They're repeatedly allowed to make these trips across the world to do things like Bilderberg Group and G20 and all this kind of stuff and discuss things with foreign powers. And then you've got, you know, there's, there's people out there with laptops that prove they're colluding with other countries that nothing's been done about and the justice that they probably deserved has not been served to them. So it's just kind of one of those things that's rules for thee and not for me. And then I think also with the whole thing, Bradley slash Ch um, 
Chelsea Manning. I was going to say Channing Tatum, <laughs> Channing Manning or something. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Like that person, I think, was released in 2017 or something. I just remember thinking that Julian Assange has uh, had it the worst <laughs> out of all the whistleblowing things that have happened of late in the last decade or so. He just seems to be still the person that's getting the brunt of it. I have not met many. There are people out there that do think this was the right course of action and think that Julian Assange embarrassed certain countries, that he exposed national security secrets. There are some people that are on the side of the establishment that is hoping to prosecute him. But yeah, few and far between. Mostly everyone is like, look, just let him come home, dickheads. Nobody cares anymore about that. Just stop. I mean, you guys have done far worse since and you've done far worse before. That kind of attitude. So I am anxious to see what will become of any meetings between the US and Australian politicians and whether or not that means Julian Assange is a step closer towards maybe being allowed to leave. Interesting times. And I hope that we get to hear about it pretty soon. And it doesn't just, you know, make the last page of the newspaper, if you still read newspapers, or the, the smallest headline at the bottom of Drudge Report or something. Don't want to be one of those people that's asking you to sub and like, but if you feel like commenting or liking, that would help me out. It'll give me the power to do more of these episodes.